In this video, we will look at how to configure the interfaces in the Cisco ASA firewall. The Cisco ASA firewall can work in two modes, either in routed mode or transparent mode. In most scenarios, we use the ASA in routed mode. It means that it works as a router. The opposite, the transparent mode, is rarely being used, and when used in transparent mode, it works as a bridge or a switch. The power of transparent mode is that you can inject the firewall as a bump on the wire, since you do not have to change the addressing because both sides of the transparent firewall are on the same IP subnet. In our scenario, we will install a router in routed mode, and therefore we will not look deeper into transparent mode in this part of the course. The opposite to transparent mode, the routed mode is the far most common solution. When in routed mode, the firewall has a number of interfaces, at least two, and all interfaces are in different IP subnets. This is basically the definition of a router, and our firewall is a router with filtering capabilities. In the topology we will use in this course, we have only two interfaces. We can call them inside and outside. Whenever you have more than two interfaces in a firewall, you normally call them DMZ, extranet, intranet, or something like that. One of the first steps of configuring a firewall is to set up the interfaces. In the world of Cisco ASA firewalls, there are three different settings or parameters that must be set on each interface. Those three commands are name if, security level, and IP address. All these three parameters must be set for the firewall interface to start forwarding traffic. If you omit any of these, it will not work. The name if parameter is used to define a name of the interface. Each interface in the device has a physical interface name. It can be gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 or fast Ethernet 2 or something like that. But for each interface that we will use in the firewall, we need to set this friendly name, like outside, inside, DMZ or whatever. This name is then what is being used in the rest of the firewall configuration. Whenever an interface is referenced in the configuration or in show commands, the device will use the friendly name inside or outside or whatever and you will rarely see the name gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 anywhere in the device. Next parameter is the security level. This is a value between 0 and 100 that must be set on each interface. I will talk more about security levels in a later lecture, but for now you need to know that a value between 0 and 100 needs to be set as security level at each interface, and that a higher number means a more secure interface, and a lower number means less security. The most obvious example is the inside interface that usually has security level 100 and the outside interface facing internet with a security level of 0. The third parameter that must be configured is the IP address parameter. As I said, each interface needs to be in unique IP subnets and with the IP address command you set the IP address and the corresponding subnet mask for each interface. Except for these three parameters, there is only one more thing to remember about firewall interfaces. By default, in an empty firewall configuration, each interface is normally shut down. If you look at the running configuration with show run, you can see that there is a shutdown command on each interface. This needs to be removed to activate the interface, and you do that with a no shut command. This is a firewall with an empty and totally clean configuration. In this course, we will configure the device step by step. We can see that there is no interface configuration and we will change that now. First of all, we will use the interface gigabit 0 slash 0 as our outside interface. This will face internet. We start with configuring the name if outside on the interface. By doing that, we are told that the firewall automatically suggests and configure the security level 0. That's fine, so we keep that. Next step is to configure the IP address. In my environment, I don't have a static IP address to use on the firewall. The outside will be connected to my lab environment, and on that network there is a DHCP server. So instead of configuring IP address on the outside interface, I will configure it to retrieve the IP setting from a DHCP server. I configure that with the command IP address DHCP set route. The last word, set route, is optional, but you will always use it. It means that besides the IP address and subnet mask, the device will also get a default route, sometimes called a default gateway, from the DHCP server. It will then insert that in the routing table. We look at the configuration and see that our three parameters are in place, but there is a shutdown on the interface, so we remove that with no shut. This was the outside interface. 
Now we need to do the same with our inside interface. We will use gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 for that. So we configure the name if for the interface as inside. We will make sure that we have security level 100 on the interface and we set the IP address of 10.0.0.1 with a mask of 255.255.255.0. Finally, we do no shut on the interface and show run to see the interface configuration. It looks complete and accurate. This was how to configure the firewall interfaces with name if, security level and IP address. Don't forget to do no shut.